Hello my loves, Tony here from Teal Yarn Crafts. Now over the past seven years, I have devoted my life to mastering the ins and outs of a little technique called Tunisian crochet. Even after sharing hundreds of project and stitch tutorials, dozens of blog posts, and even writing a best-selling book on the subject, many folks still haven't even heard of Tunisian crochet, much less tried it. Look, I get it, learning something new can be really nerve wracking, but Tunisian crochet is one of the easiest crafts to add to your toolkit. And if you already know how to knit or crochet, you're halfway there. Today, I'm sharing eight things you need to know about Tunisian crochet to prove that it ain't all that scary. The first thing you need to know is that you don't need any new tools to practice Tunisian crochet. My guess is you probably have a crochet hook in your craft kit somewhere. This is a regular old crochet hook with no special adornments or ergonomic shaping. You can use a hook like this to collect the loops needed for Tunisian crochet. Just make sure you have a hook with the same gauge all the way down the tool. And the reason for that leads us into our next tip. Next, you should know that it takes two passes to complete one row in Tunisian crochet. The first pass is called the forward pass, which involves collecting loops onto the hook. Looks a little bit like knitting, don't it? And the second pass of the row is called the return pass, where you work the loops off the hook. Add row after row to create a lovely, thick fabric. And a bonus to working Tunisian crochet flat like this is that you don't have to turn your work. Lucky for us. On to number three, it's important to know that Tunisian crochet makes a very dense fabric. Now this makes it uniquely suited to things like blankets and sweaters, but Tunisian crochet has a softer side as well. Since this technique makes a dense fabric, it's recommended that you use a hook that's larger than what they suggest on the ball band. One to two millimeters larger is a good place to start. If you want to achieve some beautiful drape in your fabric, try a lighter weight yarn or play around with a different stitch. Speaking of different stitches, here's the fourth thing you need to know. There are over 400 stitches to explore within Tunisian crochet. I'm fond of saying that Tunisian crochet is the oasis at the crossroads of knitting and traditional crochet. You can mimic knit stitches with this technique as well as classic crochet stitches or play around with stitches that are unique to this craft. There's Tunisian crochet lace, cables, chevrons, and borders. Tunisian crochet is especially good for color work and graph gains, creating crispy lines and easy transitions. And while you're playing around with those stitches, keep this little bit of info in mind. A bit of curling is 100% normal. One of the first stitches you learn is the Tunisian simple stitch and it curls like the dickens. This happens because we are constantly pulling up loops on the front of our work, creating tension. This tension results in curling towards the front of the work from the top and the bottom edge. My best advice for conquering the curl is to block your project at the end, but you could also try adding a border to your project or working a few rows of purl stitch at the beginning and the end. The sixth and arguably most important thing to know about Tunisian crochet is that you can make just about anything with it. From accessories like flowy shawls and slouchy beanies, to blankets for babies and beds, and clothing like tanks and sweaters, the sky is truly the limit. Tunisian crochet looks amazing in any yarn weight and color. You can freestyle a project and make your own design or choose from the thousands of patterns available online and in books and magazines. I especially love how Tunisian crochet shows off the beauty of hand-dyed yarn, just like in these mini skeins that I use for my adventurous scarf. Here's a tip that you absolutely cannot forget, and that is that Tunisian crochet is terribly addictive. Those repetitive stitches lull you into that zen that we stitchers love. Before you know it, half the day is gone and you have a sea of beautiful fabric. But just like I'd warn a knitter or crocheter, breaks are imperative to prevent injury. Repetitive stress injuries or everyday aches and pains are a side effect of all fiber arts. To cut down on these issues, put a pillow on your lap to support your elbows and always go for swivel cords to lessen the stress on your hands. My eighth and final tip is this. You don't have to already know how to crochet to learn Tunisian crochet, but it does help. To make things a little bit easier on yourself, practice the starting chain. Tension on your chain is imperative. Keep it loose and even throughout for a clean base to your project. And if you have issues with starting a chain, try starting with a chainless foundation row. There are lots of tutorials out there to learn a chainless foundation and you can pick it up in just a couple of minutes.
There are tons of resources to learn Tunisian crochet, including stitch tutorials, full patterns, and product reviews, all available from TL Yarn Crafts. But there's nothing quite like having a knowledgeable instructor in the room with you as you learn, and that's why I am packing up my hooks and traveling the Midwest this spring to bring Tunisian crochet to you. Here's where you can find me in spring 2024. I'll spend the weekend of March 9th teaching and socializing at Miss Pearl, which is a Black-owned, woman-owned, local yarn shop in Chicago. Come visit me at Woven Art Yarn Shop in East Lansing, Michigan on April 7th for beginner and intermediate level workshops. If you can't see me in person, join me virtually for the Spring Knitting Retreat hosted by Webs the weekend of April 19th, where I'll have several classes for you to enjoy. Spend local yarn store day with me at Have You Any Wool in Berkeley, Michigan on April 27th, details forthcoming. I'll make my first ever visit to Kansas to teach Tunisian crochet at Yarn Barn the weekend of May 18th. Last but not least, I'll wrap up the season at Threadbender Yarn Shop to celebrate their 40th anniversary on May 23rd. I've got links to all of those events down below, so make sure you sign up ASAP, seats are going fast. Tunisian crochet is a real treat and I think it would be the perfect addition to your skill set. so I really hope that you'll give it a try. Experiment, make mistakes, have a lot of fun with it. I think you'll be surprised at the lovely things you can create. I wore a different shawl in each of these segments. All of these were designed by me in Tunisian crochet and you can absolutely make these. I've linked these and a ton of other resources down below, including my very popular Learn Tunisian Crochet in 15 Minutes video. Now I personally could go on and on and on about Tunisian crochet but I really want to hear what you think so if you've tried it before drop down below and give some advice to beginners and if you've never tried Tunisian crochet let us know why and what questions you have I can't wait to read through them and answer some of your toughest questions well thanks so much for watching try Tunisian crochet and I'll see y'all next time bye <laughs> come on lovelin come on lovelin show up lovelin mm. gosh it's gorgeous Oh, pretty.